Hey, look, everyone, it's Mickey's Dangerous Chase for Game Boy. No, wait, actually, it's Mickey's Chase for Game Boy. What is Mickey chasing? He's chasing Pete. Why is Mickey chasing Pete? Because he's chasing Pete. Why are you dodging the question? Because of the stupid question. Released in 1991 courtesy of Capcom and developed by Now Productions, Mickey's Dangerous Chase is a side-scrolling platform game where you take control of either Mickey or Minnie Mouse and must chase down that dastardly bastard Pete who has stolen Minnie's birthday gift. Hence, the Dangerous Chase. Or just chase whatever floats your boat, I suppose. Mickey's Dangerous Chase comprises five stages, each with three acts apiece. After picking either Mickey or Minnie as your playable character, there's no difference between the two, you then start the game where your main goal is to navigate your way to the end of each act where Goofy is waiting for you. Your main means of attack, well, your only means of attack, that is, is to grab these blocks laying throughout the level and toss them at enemies. You could toss the blocks while standing or crouching, and you could even toss them upwards to hit those above, but you can't hide in them though, so don't try it. Some of these crates or blocks or whatever contain items that will help you on your journey, whether they be life replenishing hearts, one ups, or collectible stars and orbs. Each act has four orbs, and if you clear an act with all four in your possession, you'll earn an extra life. Stars act in the same manner as gold coins in Super Mario, collect a hundred of them for another life. Some stars will even give you five, which is nice. With the exception of the final battle with Pete in the final stage, there are no boss battles in Mickey's Dangerous Chase. Instead, the third act of each level ends with Mickey or Minnie riding some vehicle, whether it be a boat, a bird, or a car, depending on the situation. The game has no checkpoints. If you die, you lose a life and restart at the beginning of the current act. Obviously, if you lose all your lives, it's game over. You do have unlimited continues, but you have to restart the whole stage from scratch. Fortunately, Mickey's Dangerous Chase isn't a long game, and once you nail the patterns and the best course to navigate through the terrain, it shouldn't take you that long to beat. Don't take this to mean that this is a cakewalk, because while the chase starts off easy early on to acclimate yourself to the game's mechanics, it does get somewhat trickier towards the latter half of the game with some precision platforming and positioning. This is especially true of the auto-scrolling vehicle bits where timing is everything if you want to survive or grab them pickups along the way. Now fortunately the game does have some fairly solid and tight controls. Mickey's jumps are a bit floaty but still somewhat manageable. The crate grabbing mechanic works well enough. But be careful while ducking when holding a crate or a box or whatever because that just makes you a bigger target for evil fire hydrants or what have you. Mickey's Dangerous Chase sports some rather decent graphics. The simple cutscenes feature well-drawn renditions of these classic Disney characters, and the in-game portions aren't too bad looking either. You can make out familiar characters like Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, and Pete just fine, and the various enemy characters maintain that sort of Disney-esque art style which fits with the overall world for whatever that's worth. The levels are rather basic looking with some simple backdrops and minor bits, but there's some unique looking stages like this factory looking thing with the gears and stuff. It's a clean looking game, moves at a somewhat leisurely pace, so playing this on an old Game Boy won't bring about any blurring issues. Now while the game looks fine for a monochrome Game Boy title, when it comes to sound, it's a little less so. There's a couple tunes in the game that are almost quite catchy. The tune that plays in Stage 1-2 stuck in my head long after playing, but for the most part, you have a soundtrack comprising only a handful of tunes that fall a bit on the bland side of the scale. There's nothing outright terrible, but suffice it to say, there's nothing here that will be held up to standards as high as the moon or something. Sound effects are okay, and that is all. Overall, Disney's Dangerous Chase is a fun little game that's good for kids, but can also be fun for older folks since it's not a complete cakewalk. It's one of those straightforward platform games that doesn't take a whole lot of time to get into and offers a nice bit of moderate challenge with its auto-scrolling bits and generally patient level design without ever dipping into fits of frustration. Not bad for a Game Boy outing on the go, and another quality Disney game from the Capcom camp, even if somebody else did the actual developing of the game, but whatever, it works, it's fun, and it's cheap. So yeah, Mickey's Dangerous Chase for Game Boy, 
pretty good stuff.